Dear yes, students, now we are going to discuss today one important topic in chemistry that is electrochemistry. We are going to discuss electrochemistry today. Now, oh, electrochemistry is a branch of chemistry. It is a branch of physical chemistry which deals with chemical changes. It deals with chemical changes or physical changes. It deals with chemical changes or physical changes which involves which involves which involves either the production of current production of current or production of current or that is generated of current production of current or consumption of current consumption of current. So it deals with either production of current or use of current. Consumption is using current. So both these the changes that occur in the production of current or in the consumption of current, maybe physical change or chemical change. Now that will be called as it deals with the chemistry deals with these kind of changes. Now in the electrochemistry, now it is production of current or in consumption of current. Actually, it involves two types of arrangements for production of current and for consumption of current. We have to note the changes, to note the chemical or physical changes in the production of current or in the consumption of current. We have two types of arrangements. That is the first one is electrochemical cell, electrochemical cell, and the second one is electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell. The second one is electrolytic cell. So these are the two types of cells which deals with the chemical changes in a. So we will try to understand what is an electrochemical cells and the electrolytic cells and the differences also. In electrochemical cells, they are also called as galvanic cells or worldwide cells. Here, what we do is, is the major use of this electrochemical cell is it converts, it converts, it converts <coughs> chemical energy into it converts chemical energy, it converts chemical energy into electrical energy it converts chemical energy into electrical energy that is the first main important of the uh, importance of the electrochemical cell whereas in the electrolytic cell here we have the electrolytic electrolytic cell what happens is uh, we use current that is we send current into the electrolytes and the electrolytes they dissociate into positive and negative pairs they dissociate into positive and negative. That is, what happens is by sending electricity, we are making a chemical reaction to chemical reaction to occur. Whereas here, you see now, because of the chemical reaction, it is actually it is converted through a paradox reaction, through a oxidation and reduction reaction. The chemical energy is converted into electrical energy through a spontaneous redox reaction by using it. Spontaneous redox reaction. By using a spontaneous redox reaction, 
we convert chemical energy into electrical energy. Whereas in the electrolytic cell, what happens is by sending current, that is electrical energy is converted into chemical energy to supply electrical energy. So electrical energy, electrical energy. Electrical energy is converted into electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. Electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. So, you know, so the main difference is it converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Whereas here electrical energy is that is if you send electricity or current into the and the electrolyte, the electrolyte, the electrolyte dissociates, a reaction takes place, and the chemical reaction takes place. Yes, because of the chemical reaction, electricity is produced here. Yeah. Here, by supplying electricity, we are carrying out a chemical reaction. That is the main difference. The second difference is in electrochemical cells, what happens is we use two different electrodes. We use two different electrodes and two different electrolytes. This is a beaker consisting of for example gene sulfate electrolyte. Gene sulfate electrolyte. Here another in another beaker copper sulfate electrolyte is there. Copper sulfate. And into this electrolyte, so this is called an electrolyte. This is another electrolyte. And now a zinc rod a zinc, this is zinc rod. So zinc rod is dipped in the, its own ions. Aqueous solution containing its own ions, that is zinc ions, electrolyte, that is zinc sulfate. Similarly, here, copper rod is dipped in, this is copper rod is, copper rod is dipped in copper sulfate. Copper rod dipped in its own solution, this copper sulfate solution. So this is so different electrodes are used and different electrolytes are used in different compartments. And now these two are connected by some other arrangement that we will discuss this time. So this is the second point. Here, the electrolytic cell, we use only one vessel or a beaker. We use only one vessel or a beaker which consists of an electrolyte. This is an electrolyte. For example, we can take NaCl an electrolyte. Sodium chloride is an electrolyte. You can take sodium chloride solution, aqueous solution. And you can dip the same electrodes. Both the electrodes are dipped in the electrolyte. Both the electrodes are dipped in the electrolyte. Here. Both these two electrodes can be same or they can be different. We can take same copper zinc electrodes or same electrodes also, carbon electrodes you can take, copper carbon electrodes you can take. So this is how, so same electrodes are different electrodes. So now it is connected to a, it is connected to a, externally connected to a battery. This is a battery. Whereas here, these two rods, they are connected to, they are connected to, you see now, So these two electrodes are connected to a voltmeter which measures which measures the current, which measures the current, voltage of the current that is produced here. So voltmeter is connected. And these two now are internally connected by an arrangement, an inverted U-tube-like arrangement, which is called as salt bridge, which is called as salt bridge. We will discuss this. Lab. We'll discuss about the salt bridge. We'll discuss about the salt bridge lab. So this is oh, also here. Two different electrolyte electrodes are same electrodes are dipped in a, a single electrolyte, a single electrolyte, and current is sent in this. So the negative terminal, which is called as this electrode, is called as cathode. So cathode is connected to negative terminal of the battery and this is this electrode acts like 
anode. We call it as anode. So anode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. This is positive terminal of the battery. This is negative terminal of the battery. So cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Anode is connected. Anode plate or electrode is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. Now, so this is the setting up of the electrolytic cell. So when you set electricity into this solution, sodium chloride dissociates into Na plus ions, Na plus ions, and Cl minus ions. It dissociates into Na plus ions and Cl minus ions. So that is what is happening. If you look at this, another main important difference is you see now here. So this is copper. This is zinc. This is copper is called as cathode. Now the cathode is connected to the this is cathode now. This is anode. Here the cathode is connected to the negative terminal. Whereas cathode, what happens is a positive potential is developed. Cathode is a positive positive potential is developed at cathode in the cathode cell. Whereas here anode, we have a negative potential is developed. Anode. This is called as negative terminal. You can take it as it is a positive terminal, positive for copper. So whereas here this is a copper cathode is connected to the negative terminal of the battery. So that is another important difference. Uh, electrode is there between the electrochemical cell and the electrolytic cell. And it converts as we have discussed now. Salt metal is used. That is, these two electrolytes, these two electrolytes. They are internally connected by a salt bridge. This equipment is called as this arrangement is called as salt bridge. So it allows the negative ions to move from one uh, electrode uh, to the another electrode or cell. This is one half cell. This is the another half cell. So the electron, the negative ions will move from cathode compartment to the anode compartment. So salt bridge is used for that. Where we don't use salt bridge in a, we don't use salt bridge in a electrolytic cell. We don't use salt bridge in a electrolytic cell. So these are some important differences between the electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells. So major you have to remember this one: the use of these two cells. That is, electrochemical cells are used to convert chemical energy into chemical energy into Chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. Electrical energy. Whereas in the electrolytic cell, electrical energy and the other gases. It is electrical energy. Current is supplied into the electrolyte, and it is dissociated. The chemical reaction takes place. So that is all. Some major differences between the electrolytic cell. Chemical, electrochemical cell, and electrolytic cell. So we look at this. You see now here. You can look at this chart now. You can look at this chart. So it is a electrochemical cell. It is a device. It converts chemical energy into electrical energy. Whereas electrolytic cell is a device which converts Electrical energy into chemical energy. And the second one, two electrodes are I have told you, two electrodes are set up. Both the electrodes are set up in a, in the solution of the electrolyte in the same beaker. Only one beaker is used. The electrodes taken are of different materials here. Whereas in the electrolytic cell, you see now they may be different or the same. The fourth point, the electrode, the electrode on which Oxidation takes place is called as anode. You see now, so at this electrode, at this half cell, oxidation takes place. We will go into the in detail of the content. So oxidation takes place at the anode. This is called as anode compartment. This is called as cathode compartment. Here reduction takes place. Here reduction takes place. Now. Whereas, if you look at that, the electrode which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is called as cathode. Whereas this electrode, 
which is connected to the negative terminal of the battery is called as cathode. Whereas the galvanic cell, the electrode where reduction takes place is called as cathode. The electrode where oxidation takes place is called as anode. It is called as anode. It is called as anode. So these are some differences. Now, let us see now. We have not bothered about the electronic cell at present. We will discuss in detail about the electrochemical cells or they are also called as galvanic cells. Let us see now. What are galvanic cells? Let us see what are galvanic cells. Let us study about the galvanic cells. Galvanic cells. So galvanic cells are also called as voltaic cells. Voltaic cells they are also called as. Here they are nothing but an electrochemical, electrochemical cell. Galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell. So the construction is of this cell is like this. We have we have two compartments here. We have two compartments here, two different compartments like this. Two different compartments. In a one of these compartments, the electrolyte, for example, here, G sulfate is taken. ZNSO4 is taken. G sulfate electrolyte is taken in the first compartment. In the second compartment, Here we take copper sulfate. We take copper sulfate aqueous solution. A solution. Solutions are taken here. This is copper sulfate. This is zinc sulfate is taken. Now in this zinc sulfate we dip zinc rod. We dip zinc rod. We dip zinc rod. This is zinc rod. Jet is made about zinc. A zinc rod is dipped in zinc sulfate. We call it as zinc is dipped in its own solution. Ions of its own solution. That is zinc sulfate. Similarly, here we dip copper rod. We dip copper rod in copper sulfate. So this is copper rod. This is Cu. Copper rod. Copper rod is dipped in its own ions solution. Like that. Now this will make one half cell. This will zinc dipping zinc sulfate will make one half cell. This is called as half cell. This is one half cell. This is second half cell. This is called as second half cell. This is the first half cell. This is the second half cell. Now this half cell will make one electrode. This is one electrode. This is another electrode. So this electrode now zinc dipping zinc sulfate. Now this electrode now is connected to the other electrode by externally by voltmeter. Externally these two electrodes are connected through a uh, an external wire to the voltmeter which measures the voltage of the which measures the voltage of the current that is supplied here. Now internally, internally these two electrodes, you see now, so these two electrodes now they are internally connected by, they are internally connected by another arrangement like this. Can you see this arrangement? An inverted U2, this is called as inverted U tube arrangement. So this is inverted U tube arrangement. Okay, this is inverted U tube arrangement. Here we will take some salt like potassium chloride or we take 
KCL potassium chloride or KNO2 potassium nitrate. This type of inert salt, we call them as inert salts. They are called as inert salts are taken. Inert salts are taken. And we add some other other junk. Other other is added to this salt so that it becomes a it, it becomes a uh, it exists in molten state. So the salt taken should exist in molten state, it should not fall down. So some jelly is added, agar agar is added. So it remains in a molten state. Now it is an inverted U2. So the salt bridge is in this is called as salt bridge. This is called as salt bridge. This is called as salt bridge. It is an inverted U2. In it, inert salts are taken to which some other other fertilizer is added so that it becomes it remains in a modern state. The gel state. At the end of this U2, we there are some glass wool is plugged. Glass wool is plugged at the ends of this U2. Glass wool is cut here. Now, so by this way, by using the salt of it, there is there are so many advantages. Number one, the major advantage by using the salt of is it internally connects the two electrodes, the these two half cells, and completes the reaction. It completes the reaction. So without intermixing these two solutions, without intermixing, unlike in the electron mixer, without inter intermixing these two cells, now it is internally connected. So these two vessels or these two half cells are internally connected by the that is the purpose. Now, so actually, if you take KCl, the cation that is K plus, the anions minus. So Cl minus ions will move towards anode. So zinc between zinc sulfate will act like anode. It acts like anode. Copper between copper sulfate will act like cathode. It acts like cathode. So this half cell acts like a cathode. This half cell acts like an the internal connected. So these positive ions move towards cations. Cations move towards cathode and anions move towards an anode. That's what is happening now. Now, so these two are connected internally and externally. So this is the arrangement of a so what happens now when they are connected now? We'll see. Now this is dialectically uh, represented in the cathode itself. Now we'll see what kind of reaction takes place and how electricity is produced here. How electricity is produced here. Now let us look at the diagram of this. You can see now. So this is the galvanic cell. This is the galvanic cell. You can see here. This is the galvanic cell. This is copper rod dipped in copper sulphate, zinc rod zinc dipped in zinc sulphate. Now they are connected externally by a wire through the voltmeter. This is a voltmeter. And internally these two half cells are connected through a through a salt bridge. Here you have taken sodium sulfate salt. Sodium sulfate salt is taken. Anything sodium sulfate, potassium chloride, potassium nitrate can be taken. So this is the arrangement of the electrodes. Now if you connect these two electrodes, if you connect these two electrodes, connect these two electrodes, then it becomes then it becomes a galvanic cell. So the sum of these two half cells, the sum of the Half cells, these two half cells will make a galvanic cell and it produces electricity, it produces electricity. Let us see how this cell, how this cell produces electricity. What is the chemical reaction that is taking place? So, at the anode, let us see the anode. What is happening at that time? Let us see the chemical reactions. Let 
can see the chemical reactions that are taking place at the anode and cathode and how electricity is produced. So at the anode, what is there now? Anode zinc is between zinc sulfate. So that is zinc between zinc sulfate. This is how we write zinc in zinc sulfate. So what happens is the zinc metal now when it is different, here it is, when zinc is different zinc sulfate, the zinc metal, the zinc atoms, they lose electrons, they lose electrons and they become ZN plus 2. They lose electrons, they become ZN plus 2 and they come into the solution as ZN plus 2. And the electrons will remain on this zinc rod. The electrons will remain on this zinc rod. So, zinc loses two electrons and comes into the solution as ZN plus 2. That is what is taking us to anode. That is, zinc loses two electrons, zinc loses two electrons, becomes ZN plus 2. Zinc loses two electrons, becomes ZN plus 2, goes into the solution now. So, this is a chemical reaction. What is happening here? One species is losing electrons. So in this chemical reactions, a species is losing electrons. Loss of electrons is oxidation. So this is an oxidation reaction. This is an oxidation reaction. It is an oxidation reaction. It is an oxidation reaction because loss of electrons. You can remember, you have a, a blind mother of the moment. Leo. You see those here? Lion, Lion, Leo, Lion, L for loss, E for electron, E is oxidation. So, loss of electrons is oxidation. You can remember the chemical equation like this. So, zinc is losing two electrons, becoming ZN plus 2, a neutral atom loses electrons, become positive. Yeah. So, it is oxidation reaction. Now, but the, this is one half. This is called an oxidation of cell. This is called as oxidation of anode. Oxidation. This is called as oxidation of cell. This is called as oxidation of cell. The oxidation takes place here. Let us come to the another of cell. That is copper rod dipped in copper sulfate. So what happens is in copper sulfate, you know, copper is present in the form of Cu plus 2 ions. So the Cu plus 2 ions, the Cu plus 2 ions will gain these two electrons, will receive the two electrons, will receive the two electrons and form Cu. A neutral Cu atoms are formed. So how do they get two electrons here? The electrons that are lost by the G rod, that is zinc atoms loses. So these two electrons will travel from anode to the cathode. So this is electrons. So the electrons will move from anode to the cathode externally. External, through the external connecting wire, the electrons will move from anode to the cathode and to the cathode itself. Cathode itself. Here we have copper plus two ions in the solution. So copper plus two gains two electrons and copper is deposited already it is a copper rod already it is a copper rod and because of the formation of the copper sulfate copper ions they get reduced this U plus 2 ions they, they are gaining electrons they get so this U plus 2 ions the metal ions after gaining the electrons they become copper so this copper is deposited here on the copper rod already the copper rod is already there on the same copper rod. Now the Cu from the solution, they become Cu plus 2 ions in the solution. After gaining the two electrons released by the anode, they form Cu and Cu is deposited on the curve. So because of this reaction, it is a reduction. You can see now. So what is this reaction now? Copper is gaining, we have gain of electrons. We know that. Gain of electrons is a reduction of so G for gain of E for electrons. 
carbon reduction. So gain of chemical reaction is electrons are the absorbed or accepted. It is called as a reduction reaction. So it is a reduction. It is a reduction reaction. Has taken place. A reduction reaction has taken place at this. Another half cell. So at the second half cell, a reduction has taken place. Copper gains to electrons becomes copper, and that copper is deposited on copper. So because of this reaction, what is happening? The copper, so it becomes more in weight. The cathode copper rod. In the cathode, the copper rod, copper is more and more copper is deposited. It, its weight is increased due to the deposition of copper, which enters from the, this solution. Whereas here, if you look at the anode, zinc is Zinc, you have to look at zinc atoms are there. They lose electrons, they come into the solution as zinc crystal. So it deteriorates. The zinc rod, as the time proceeds, it deteriorates. More and more zinc atoms come into the solution as zinc crystal. So this zinc rod deteriorates, whereas the copper rod here it gets added up. Copper atoms get added up, it increases its weight. So that is reduction. So this is the Oxidation half cell we call now on the other hand, in the second half cell we have the reduction is taking place. The reduction has taken place. Reduction has taken place. Copper plus 2 in the solution gains these electrons coming from anode and forms copper atoms here. Copper, neutral copper on this copper rod. So it is a reduction reaction. Gain of electrons by copper ions. Cu plus 4 ions is a reduction reaction. So, in the first half cell, it is oxidation has taken place. In the second half cell, reduction is taken place. Is it not? It, it has taken place because we have connected them externally and internally also. That's why this is both the reaction, oxidation and reduction both have taken place. Now, suppose what is the overall reaction in this cell, in this catalytic or electrochemical cell? What is the overall reaction that is taking place if you want to know? Let us add these two reactions. If you want to know the overall reaction, let us add these two reactions. So, you have two electrons on the left hand side of the reaction. These two electrons, two electrons gets cancelled. You have ZN. You have ZN in the first reaction, left hand side, plus copper plus two. You have copper plus two. So, on the left hand side, only two atoms. So on the right hand side you have the first equation you have ZN plus 2, you have ZN plus 2 plus you have right hand side copper. So I have written after adding these two equations, their cross gets cancelled and what are the species that are left over on the left hand hand? ZN and Cu plus 2. On the right hand side you have ZN plus 2 and Cu. So this is the, what is called as the redox reaction. It is zinc converted into ZN plus 2, loss of electrons, oxidation, copper plus 2 converted into copper, reduction. So both in this reaction, both oxidation and reduction reactions are taking place. So we call them as redox, it is a redox reaction. It is a redox reaction. This is a redox reaction. Both oxidation and reduction has taken place. Because of this redox reaction, it is a spontaneous reaction. It is a spontaneous reaction, uh, redox reaction that is taking place in this cell. During this process, what is happening? The two electrons that are left, that are liberated by this zinc, they move externally to this wire and they are deployed, they enter into the cathode. Is it not? It is a continuous process. Okay? Now the sulfate ions from here, the sulfate ions move from cathodic compartment to the anode. So the sulfate ions, you see now here, SO4 molecule, they move from cathode to the anode of this. So cathode to the anode, the sulfate ions move from cathode to the anode to where? Through the salt bridge. Through the salt bridge, the sulfate ions, that is anions, they move from one compartment, that is one half cell to another half cell. In this way, uh, the circuit is completed. So, salt bridge plays an important role in completing the circuit. So, externally, electrons will travel from anode to cathode. 
internally the sulfate ion is the ions are coming from cathode to the anode. So the substitute is completed. So these two electrons that are created, so these kind of electrons that are created will, will, will generate electricity. So this kind of arrangement now has produced the electricity, electricity which can be observed here in this voltmeter. In this voltmeter, the voltage of the current produced can be measured here. So that's why these kind of the chemical reactions where so in this equipment, arrangement of equipment, because of the spontaneous redox reaction, because of the spontaneous redox reaction, the electricity is produced. The electricity is produced. So chemical energy, because of this chemical reaction, the electrical energy is produced. So such uh, apparatus or such a phenomena, now it is uh, arrangement is called as a they are called as galvanic cells. Yeah. They are called as galvanic cells. So let us look at this diagram. What all I have got? I am showing you all with a nice diagram here. You can see here. You can see here. So this is zinc rod anode dipped in zinc sulfate. Zinc rod dipped in zinc sulfate works as anode. Copper rod, this is dipped in copper sulphate solution acts as cathode these two are externally connected by a wire through voltmeter this is voltmeter this is voltmeter and internally these two half cells are connected by an inverted u tube inverted u tube so this is called as salt bridge this is called as salt bridge so what is the uses of the salt bridge now now it avoids intermixing of these two electrolytes. Number one point. Second point is uh, it internally connects these two half cells. It connects internally these two half cells. So these are the major uses of the salt bit. Now you can see that this is the cell diagram. This is what is called as galvanic cell, or it is called, also called as Daniel cell. It is called as Daniel cell. It is called as Daniel cell. It is a cell diagram. Now I have written here, what all I have written in the blackboard is shown here. You can see you now LHS oxidation reaction at anode. ZN becomes ZN plus 2. And at RHS copper plus 2 gains 2 electrons becomes copper. Adding those two overall you get a redox reaction like this. You can see this. The cell diagram and the redox reaction is shown. The cell diagram on the redox reaction is shown here. Now, how to represent this cell? How to represent the cell? Now we have seen the diagram really, this is how I show the cell. Now I want to represent this shell. How can I show this? You see now here. Generally there is a general we have an organization of what is called a Ayupak. Ayupak. A system, a chemical organization which gives a normal feature for the chemical substance, IUPAC. So the IUPAC has given a representation, a representation for this cell. Generally, how these galvanic cells can be represented. So there is a tradition, everybody should follow it. It is a general tradition to follow the representation of the chemical cell. For that, what you have to do is anode you have to write on the left hand side, you have to write anode, right? Anode on the left hand side and write cathode on the right hand side cathode on the right hand side and these two now are separated by a salt bit so this double line, perpendicular double line, parallel lines it indicates the presence of a salt bit so this double line indicates the presence of a salt bit now anode I have on the left hand what is the anode here in this diagram now? anode, zinc liquid zinc sulfate so zinc is present, you have to write the physical state of each of the species here. Zinc and zinc sulfate. Zinc is 
not in the solid state is separating it is with a single line perpendicular line and we have the electrolyte jetted plus it is deeply jetted plus to aqueous electrolyte the state of this so it is an active solution so aqueous electrolyte we can mention the concentration also so this is anode and this is the solvent <coughs> Cathode. What is cathode? Second half cell. Copper dipped in copper sulfide. Copper dipped in copper sulfide. So now we have to don't write the, the copper. We have to write the electrolyte first here. We have to write the electrolyte first. We have to write the cathode electrolyte. So what is the electrolyte in the cathode? This is the cathode compartment half cell. We have copper sulfate here. Copper sulfate is we should write Cu plus 2 aqueous. Cu plus 2 aqueous. And separated by a single line. And copper rod in the solid state. Copper rod in the solid state. And also we can mention the EMF of this cell. The EMF of this cell here is equal to 1.1 volts. We are calculating how do we get the 1.1 volts voltage of this uh, galvanic radial cell. We do that, we work out. So, this is how we represent this is the cell notation by U of etc. This is the cell notation given by U of So, anywhere you go around the world, a chemical cell. A galvanic chemical cell should be re represented by this form only. That is anode at the right side of the left side. This is cathode on the right side. Cathode on the right side. So in the anode compartment, we have zinc in zinc sulfate. So I have mentioned the phase state of the each of these species. Here, copper, I don't write copper metal here. You have to write the Copper aqueous solution that is electrolyte that is used. Electrolyte is used. So, this is copper. So, by this way, these two cells, two half cells will make one galvanic cell. Two half cells will make one galvanic cell. And the EMF of this cell is found to be, the EMF of this cell is found to be 1.1 volts. The EMF of this cell is found to be it is measured at 1.1 volts. So what do we mean by EMF? How do you get 1.1 volt, 1 .1 volt, uh, 1 .1 volts of EMF? That we will do, we will discuss it in the uh, that we will discuss it in the next class. And also we also we are going to discuss it. Each half cell will have some potential. Each half cell, the anode half cell will have some potential. Similarly, cathode half cell will have some potential. And there is a difference between the potential between anodic potential and the cathodic potential. That will make the difference in the anode and the cathodic potential is called as the EMF of the cell. So how to uh, why do these half cells will gain or will get a potential? Why there is a difference in the potential between the cathodic electrode and the anodic electrode? All those things. We will discuss in the next class. Now, let us recapitulate what all we have studied today. So, I have discussed and I have, on the outset, I have given you the definition of what is the electrochemistry, what does it deal with. It deals with physical and chemical changes that are involved in the either consumption of electricity or production of electricity. Now, I have, I have given you the difference between a, a galvanic cells are electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells. We have differentiated it. Next, we have taken exclusively the galvanic cells or electrochemical cells. So, galvanic cell is an electrochemical cell which converts chemical energy into the electrical energy. So, we have taken Daniel cell. This is a Daniel cell. It is called as Daniel cell. Daniel cell, I have pictorially have the, we have drawn the diagram here. So, this is, it consists of two half cells, two half cells, and and cathode, they are taken to different vessels or beakers. Anode, zinc rod, different zinc sulfate. Copper rod, different copper sulfate. 
like this. So this is one half cell, this is another. But first anodic cell we have oxidation takes place. I'm ready to give Oxidation reaction takes place at the anode. And at cathode, at cathode reduction takes place. At cathode reduction takes place. I have all those things I'm discussing. And when you plug these two half cells, when you join these two houses externally and internally, it makes a galvanic cell. It makes a galvanic cell. And uh, there will be a potential difference between this anode potential, anode potential and the cathode, cathode potential. That is the difference in the potential between the anode and cathode is called as EMF of the cell. EMF of the cell. I have discussed it and we have discussed the, what are the oxidation reactions taking place at anode, what is the reduction reaction that is taking place at cathode, and at what is the overall redox reaction. This is called as redox reaction. How do you get the redox reaction in this cell of the cell? Combine the oxidation and the reduction cells, you will get the redox reaction. And we have discussed how to represent a cell on the paper given by Ayubat. So, this is how we represent any cell, any electrochemical cell. This is the format we have, to discuss. we have discussed this. And in the next class, we are going to discuss, as I said, what is EMF, what is the potential of the half cell, what is the anode potential, what is cathode potential. What is the potential difference? How? Why do they exhibit potential difference? All those things we will study in the next class. Thank you very much.